Hanan. Today is the third Sunday of the Blessed Month of Baba. And this Sunday, we focus on the demon-possessed man. And we see our Lord's power over Satan. This is the theme of the month. We see our Lord's power in different situations. Over sickness, over um, life circumstances, over nature. And then next week, we even focus on death itself. And so today we focus on our Lord's power over Satan. Every year around this time, we hear this powerful and I think sometimes a frightening story in the gospel of a man who is possessed by demons. Modern psychologists and scientists would tell us that it's probably some kind of mental illness. They tell us that, you know, the people of old were not that sophisticated. They didn't understand properly these things, and so they might attribute it to superstition. The problem with all this is that they completely ignore the words and the actions of our Lord Jesus Christ who responded to what he encountered. The scriptures speak of demons and the de demonic as a reality of our fallen world. Just as there are angelic spirits, ministers and messengers of our Lord, likewise, there are evil spirits that serve Satan, who himself is a fallen angel. And we know that Satan and his demons exists because we believe in the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. We believe that he is trustworthy, much more trustworthy than anyone who has ever lived. And we believe that he was tempted by Satan in the wilderness and also he cast out demons from people on numerous occasions. And if we listen to the words of the well-known author C.S. Lewis, he says, There are two equal and opposite errors into which our race can fall about the devils. One is to disbelieve in their existence, and the other is to believe and to feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. They themselves are equally uh, pleased by both errors and hail as materialists or magicians with the same delight. In other words, according to C.S. Lewis, a convert from atheism, a brilliant man, he says that if you don't believe in demons or if you believe in them with an unhealthy attraction towards them, either way, the demons win. Why do they win? Because the goal of a demon is to keep people from focusing on our Lord Jesus Christ, from loving God. And this is much easier than ever during our day and age, when you can have your eyes and your hearts glued to a device every single minute of the day. And so we're left wondering, why was this man possessed? And more importantly, I think the, the better question is, what can we as Christians do to protect ourselves from this influence, this evil influence? One step is to avoid this evil influence, is to guard our senses. All of the information that we take in through our senses has either a consequence or a benefit. There's a pro and there's a con. Here's an example. If we watch the weather report, or if we you know, pull up that app on our phones of the weather report, it gives us an opportunity to be prepared for the weather accordingly. It might mean that we bring an umbrella, or that we bring a sweater, or apply sunscreen, depending on the day. But information can also have consequences. And in St. Paul's letter in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we're reminded that bad company corrupts good morals. So if this is true, when we are with badly behaved or immoral people, it's also true when we take time uh, taking in information from books that are not recommended, for example, or violent or explicit material, things like this. So all of this can have an effect and can help separate people from the love of God in Christ which is the goal of the demons in the first place. And so when I say this, I also mean that 
parents should be working to guard their children's senses. You might ask, what should we be guarding against? Anything that makes light of sin. Anything that distorts our Christian worldview. I'm thinking about shows or movies that we may be allowing our kids to watch. I'm thinking about the devices that we that can suck our children in. And of course, there's other things. But we have to even be vigilant regarding what is being taught to our kids in the schools. Regarding our children, St. John Chrysostom says, In children, we have a great charge committed to us. Let us bestow great care upon them and do everything that the evil one may not rob us of them. But now our practice is the reverse of this. We take all care indeed to have our farm in good order. We take care of our possessions for our children. But of the children themselves, we take no care at all. Form the soul of thy son properly, and all the rest will be added hereafter. This is St. John Chrysostom speaking. Sounds like a priest from modern times. It goes without saying that it is much easier to implement these things for our kids. If we adults do them as well, we have to practice what we preach. If we are not vigilant regarding these matters as adults, then we will slowly be affected. We can be manipulated. We can be turned away from our Lord and his path. So let us not think that of our senses as something given to us merely for our pleasure, right? For doing my will. But we have to think of our senses as being given to us as a gift, a way for us to seek and to know and to experience God. These senses were given to us for doing God's will and for living a true and holy life. There is a fight for power. Who will have authority over you and guide you? There is a fight for resources. Who will you serve with your gifts and your talents? There's a fight for real estate. Who will live and reign in your heart? And the battle is happening every single minute of every single day. And that's why St. Paul urges his people to pray without ceasing. This is why St. Peter in his first epistle writes, Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Now, if you've ever watched the nature program, you know that lions might be big and bad, but the lion never goes after the strongest or the fastest antelope. He prowls looking for the slow, looking for the young, looking for the weak, looking for the sick. And those words are meant to scare us. They're meant to inform us of an unseen reality. According to our Lord Jesus Christ, demons are a real possibility. Many of our church fathers spoke of possession, and many modern uh, elders and saints mention it as well. None of this has changed with the times because these are spiritual truths. These are spiritual realities. They are not subject to scientific examination in a lab or anything like that. Labs and experiments are for material and physical observations the church is a place for spiritual observation. And so we can also avoid the evil influence in our lives by filling our lives with Christ and the things of Christ. We can fill our lives with the word of God, with the lives of the saints, with the hymns of the church, with the holy services, with prayer, with the sacraments especially the life-giving body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, we can fill our lives with acts of mercy and acts of kindness and acts of love, even towards those who hate us and despise us. And so, like I said before, we have to examine ourselves and we have to examine our senses, but also we have to limit our opportunity for sin. 
Don't put yourself in a place that makes it easier for you to sin. It's like the youth that asks to be the designated driver for the party. Don't put yourself in the party. There's no blessing in that. Take the TVs, take the devices, if they cause you to sin, out of the room. Charge them in the living room. Be rid of them. Put it out in the open. Always have a device out in the open so that your back, the screen is facing the public areas. Keep yourself busy so that you don't get bored and get the desire to sin. All of these actions that we do for self-discipline, they, they work as a torch and they disperse the dark powers and the activity that swirls against us. If Christ is present at the center of our lives, the demons will be forced to scatter and they're going to be more like annoying gnats, annoying flies than the, these fearsome dragons that sometimes Hollywood depicts. Because, of, because our God is much greater than even the greatest of enemies. And so we're focusing on the power of God. Our Lord is the Lord of all creation, and he's the Lord of all of our lives. Nothing, no demon, no influence, no legion of demons can stand in his way. When our Lord Jesus Christ truly abides richly in us, we discover a power greater than any kind of evil influence, any kind of habit, any kind of obsession, any kind of addiction. And sometimes those things seem so overwhelming. Christ, the Almighty One, is ready to cast out whatever demon assails us. And even those ingrained forces which have controlled us for years and even the majority of our lives, these demons also our Lord can cast out. Remember the encouraging words of St. Paul to his disciple, St. Timothy. He said, For God has, has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. St. Theophan, the recluse, who lived in the 19th century, he wrote, You must never be afraid if you are troubled by a flood of thoughts that the enemy is too strong against you, that his attacks are never ending, that the war will last for your lifetime, and that you cannot avoid incessant downfalls of all kinds, know that our enemies, with all their wiles, are in the hands of our divine commander, our Lord Jesus Christ, for whose honor and glory you are waging war. Since he himself leads you into battle, he will certainly not suffer your enemies to use violence against you and overcome you, if you do not yourself cross over to their side with your will, he will himself fight for you and will deliver your enemies into your hands when he wills and as he wills. Our Christian life is about being in the hands of a master. Either we are in the hands of Satan and his puppet and we do his will, or we are in the hands of our creator, the master of our life, the one who molds us and forms us into a new man. Every choice, every decision, every moment of our lives is a chance to further our, and solidify our standing with Christ. When we choose evil, and when we choose to rebel against God and to fall in sin, we are choosing to have the, deme the demons to have new strings on us. We are giving them control over us. Sometimes they take us further and further from Christ. On the other hand, when we choose to follow Christ and to follow his teachings and to follow his commands, the strings of Satan are cut and we find ourselves shaped and transformed into the likeness of God. Our God gives us this liberation and freedom from all these evil influences to all his kids. Don't make yourself a slave when the Lord has made you free. Christ, out of his love for us, has given us freedom as his children. 
And it's our choice to exercise this freedom we have in Christ or to choose to be slaves to the world that's around us. St. Paul in his letter to the Galatians tells us not to use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but rather to serve one another through love. This is how God wins the battle. This is how he wins the battle for power and our resources and our real estate. By giving us the freedom to serve one another, to care for one another, to feed and clothe one another, to encourage and support one another, and most of all, to love one another. So to conclude, there are all sorts of forces and things and events and even people that can cause us separation from ourselves and from others and from, more importantly, God. Christ is stronger than anything, anything that fragments our lives. He is the one who binds us. He is the one who heals our wounds that separates us. He refashions pieces into a new whole. There is nothing about our lives that cannot be put back together by the love of God in Christ. May we allow Christ to truly be the Lord and master of our lives and glory be to God forever. Amen.